It's just one week since the two incident-packed races at the Salzburg Ring in Austria, but a lot has happened in that time. The TCR International Series can usually guarantee drama and excitement, plus a few thrills and spills, but the two Austrian races excelled themselves. There were wins for Dusan Borkovic in race one and Roberto Colciago in race two, with Colciago's teammate Attila Tashi finishing second, and so the Mira Racing Team boss Norbert Michelic was a happy man. Yeah, memories for lifetime. So I'm really grateful for, uh, for the team, for everyone cheering for us, uh, helping us on our way, uh, and I'm confident that more success will come. But it wasn't all good news. On the left of your screen is the Volkswagen Golf of Rob Huff, rolling six times. Remarkably, Huff had a new car within days of the incident. Or, to be more accurate, a new car, but the same engine. Yeah, I'm, I'm here and I'm smiling and uh, uninjured, which is a uh, testament to these TCR cars, you know, built you know, very, very strongly. Um, we rolled it six times. Um, unfortunately, we got a puncture on the exit of the fastest corner, 215 kilometres an hour, we left the track. And uh, about 10 metres after that, we hit a barrier very hard and uh, the barrier flexed and that launched the car in the air. But yeah, six times we went over and uh, absolutely everything on the car was destroyed by the engine, which is uh, a small miracle for us. But yeah, literally absolutely everything of the car is totally, totally destroyed. A pair of podium finishes at the Salzburg Ring means a new leader of the Drivers' Series. Two-time TCR champion Stefano Comini, who's now in a familiar position. Now we are leading in the championship. Like the, I think the two, the two years uh, before, I think it was the same. In the middle of the season, I was uh, quite every time leading the championship with few points, like now, but uh, it's every time good. And so, a week later, the series moves on to Budapest in Hungary. The Hungaro Ring hosts rounds 11 and 12 of the 2017 TCR International Series, and the largest grid of the season so far, 26 cars, includes a large contingent of Hungarian drivers. The local hero makes his driving debut in the series, but will juggle the driving with his role as boss of his own team, Mira Racing. Doing a race in, in front of my home crowd is just uh, amazing and he's a uh, memory for a lifetime. I'm sure that this weekend will be special as well, and I'm really looking forward to it. But Michelic isn't the only Hungarian driver in the team. It's a motivation for me to catch him. <laughs> so the aim is to fight with him or even overtake him. Norby would love to win in front of his home fans, but he has a job to do, to support his two drivers in their battle to be TCR champions. Norby was helping me a lot from outside of the track and even he will get in the car so he will help me much more. My main target is to help uh, Attila and Roberto in their fight for the championship. Uh, if I can do that and we can collect some important points, maybe one podium, I will be happy. A podium at least, but I, want, I would be happy if I could score my first win. Saturday's qualifying session took place in the late afternoon and, running together from the very start of Q1, the three Mira racing drivers were out to help each other go through to Q2. Norbert Michelic laid down an early marker after being fastest in both free practice sessions. jean carl Vernet was second fastest, but with Michelic later losing his fastest lap for infringing track limits, Vernet became the first driver all weekend to beat the Hungarian in a session. Matto Homola also went through to Q2, the Opel clearly now working properly after a frustrating start to the season. Milovan Vesnic ended his qualifying parked up with a puncture, but it wasn't a happy session for the other Audi drivers either. Series leader Stefano Camini didn't go through to Q2 after finishing Q1 in 17th place, and it was a similar story for his come-to-you racing teammate Frederick Vervish, although he at least wasn't carrying 30 kilos of success ballast. Another driver who failed to make the cut was James Nash, who ended Q1 in 13th place. The 10-minute Q2 was then very much a tale of two halves. Homola was immediately on the pace and was the first driver to top the timesheet. But the session was cut in half when the red flags came out after a little over five of those minutes had passed. The Honda of Jens Renault Moller was the cause of the stoppage, the car getting away from the Danish driver on the rundown towards Turn 1 at the start of only his second quick lap. 
When the session restarted, both Pepe Oriola and Jean Calvenet worked their way among the Mira racing trio and so disrupted the team's plans to work together. In the dying moments of the session, Michelic went fastest, with Tashi grabbing second place on the grid a few moments later. The drama hadn't quite finished, however, as Vernet then squeezed out Tashi from second place, so denying an all-Hungarian front row for race one. The man on pole position seemed happy enough, though. Uh, it was quite difficult, because in Q2 um, there was a red flag. So not much time was left to do a, to do a decent uh, lap time. But in the end, I, I managed to, to find good gap ahead of me. I had a slight slipstream, which, which helped me to, to put a good lap together. And in the end, I think it was uh, a decent lap. It was enough to be on, on pole. A grey, slightly overcast start to race day here at the Hungaro Ring is slowly but surely giving way to blue skies and rising temperatures. 4.38 kilometres then the Hungaro Ring in this current layout. And what you can't see from that track map, the 14 corners, but also the rise and fall. You saw there the little arrows pointing downhill and uphill. Real changes of elevation here. And the start finish straight uh, on the level, you then start to descend down to turn one. So then, let's get confirmation. Michelic, Michelic starts from pole alongside Vernet. Tashi and Oriola on row two. Colciago and Huff saw on row three. Steele Paulsen and uh, Gianni Morbidelli row four. Giacomo Altoe and Jens Reno Moller, who had that big accident in Q2 qualifying yesterday. So Moller will start race two from pole. Daniel Lloyd who had his best laps disallowed in qualifying, will start from 11th, ahead of his, uh, his teammate James Nash. And uh, there is Matto Homola right at the back of the grid. And there is another frustrated man, Stefano Comini, saying yesterday that the Audi is undrivable and it handles like a tank. Watch the Hondas, one, three and five on the grid. The lights go on in sequence. Out they go, away goes Mikulic, there goes Tashi, as we expected. Tashi drags his way past Vernet. Can he get past his team leader? It looks as though he is. Indeed he is, one, two for Mira. Tashi leading from Mikulic. Possibly also Colciago, no indeed, but he has the line on the right-hand side of Jean-Carl Vernet. Vernet will have the line for the left-hander at turn two. Down the hill they go. Attila Tashi leads here in Hungary on this first lap of 14. Mikulic second. Jean Calvenet third. Then it's Colciago. Several cars running very wide through turn three. Just behind Colciago, it's Oriola. Then Huff, then Dan Lloyd, who's made his way up, then Morbidelli, then Nash, Kajaya, and Altoe. Huff from Lloyd, from Nash, from Morbidelli, from Altoe. Behind Altoe is Kajaya, Comini up to 12th, then Vavish having made his way through from the back of the grid to 13th. And into the pits comes Dusan Borkovic. The team saying yesterday that this track really didn't suit the Alpha. Let's just replay the start for you and look at Tashi get away from the second row. Nice clean start. And a cross went, there was contact between uh, Altoe and I think Moller on the start line. Let's look at that again. Yes, just a nudge between Altoe and Moller. Altoe and the Second of the West Coast Racing Volkswagens, Moller in the dark grey Honda. And that's Dean Paulson. And Rob Huff pulls up while we were watching Paulson, while we were watching that replay. Now, I don't know what the problem is with Rob Huff. And that's turn 11. Let's just take a look at this. And indeed, Huff slowing dramatically, forcing others to go really wide to get around him. Kajaya at the moment holding off Vavish. Vavish, remember, having started from the back row of the grid alongside Matto Homola. And Vavish has already made his way up to 11th. Homola behind him in 12th. Morbidelli now takes a look up the inside of James Nash, but not quite close enough. Morbidelli, though, pressuring the Seat, but 
Nash has the line for the left-hander at turn two. Down the hill they go. Nash defending from the Volkswagen. Altoe in close attendance. Kajaya now opening up a slight advantage over Vervish, who's defending from, or from Homola. There is Kamini in the background, still ahead of Demoustier. Vene still third, Colciago scrapping with Oriola. He just takes a look up the inside, but no, indeed. Colciago runs slightly wide, has Oriola got the place? I think he has, Oriola noses in front. The pair run down to turn two, side by side. Colciago has the line. So Colciago refusing to give up that position. Oriola uh, goes round the outside. The next is a right-hander. And indeed, Colciago maintains the position. Oh, and there is Vervish parked up. Comini with Moller alongside him. The two go through turn one, side by side. Comini just edging out the Danish driver. And that's De Moustier tucked up behind. Fitzer and uh, Danny Narg behind in one of the uh, Zengo Seats. And Moller's car sporting slight body damage to the rear, so there's been contact there somewhere. Borkovic is back out on track, so whatever the problem was with the Alpha was, it's been sorted and Borkovic is back out on track. Our leading trio then across the line at the start of lap 10. The gap's still around two seconds. This is just what Tashi needs. Vene third, Colciago fourth, Oriola fifth, Dan Lloyd still sixth. Then there's a gap back to James Nash. Then it's the two West Coast Volkswagens with Giacomo Altoe just popping his nose in front of Gianni Morbidelli. So again, the youngster is uh, leading the master in the team, just as in Mira racing, but uh, I suspect for very different reasons. The gap between Tashi and Michelic coming down now, 1.3 seconds. Homola takes another look at the back of Kajaya's car. They go up the start finish straight, down the hill. There you see the elevation change, dropping down the hill to turn one. Homola moves from right-hand side of the track to left. Kajaya moves to block. Now, up goes Homola. A straight drag race down the hill to turn two, but Homola, uh, Kajaya, excuse me, will have the line. Homola takes the position as Kajaya moves across, but no, indeed. Homola times the move beautifully. The Opel Astra moves into 10th position and takes the final of the point scoring positions. Stian Paulsen we saw having problems earlier on, and that looks like his race is well and truly over. So, several cars will be investigated after the race. Kajaya amongst them, Oriola amongst them, Moller, and also Colciago. They will all be spoken to. And de Moustier coming up on the timing screen. So, the stewards will see a succession of drivers after the race. But that is of no concern to our race leader, Attila Tashi, who comes up to the line, he flashes his lights, who takes the chequered flag ahead of Norbert Mikulic. A 1-2 for Mira Racing, a first ever victory in the TCR International Series for young Attila Tashi. Our congratulations to the pair, particularly to Attila Tashi. A lights to flag victory, more or less, apart from about the first 100 metres. Attila Tashi takes the victory then from Norbert Mikulic, Jean Calvenet third, ahead of Colciago, Oriola, Lloyd, Nash, Altoe, Gianni Morbidelli, and Matto Homola. Yeah, it's the best feeling ever happened in my career. To score my first win in the International Series in front of my home crowd and on my home track, it's, it's the best feeling ever happened to me. And a very popular winner of the first of today's two TCR International Series races, here at the Hungaro Ring. After race one and with the crowds packing into the circuit ahead of race two, there was time for an autograph session. Unsurprisingly, the Hungarian drivers were the most popular, in particular Tashi and Mikulic, who had time for everyone, it seemed. That's our new series leader, Roberto Colciago, one of the three Mira Racing Hondas here. And it is a Honda that starts from pole position. 
Confirmation then. Jens Renault Moller starts from pole in the Honda Civic. Alongside him, Giacomo Altoe, round uh, with uh, the second row of the grid, Morbidelli and Paulsen, Huff and Colciago, Oriola and Tashi, Vene and Michelic. And of course, Tashi taking victory in race one with Mikulic in second. Dan Lloyd from Look Oil Craft Bamboo with his teammate James Nash alongside him. And then looking further down the order, Dusan Borkovic had an issue in race one. From what I could gather, it was something to do with the exhaust on the Alfa Romeo. Came in after, I think, one or two laps and went back out towards the end of the race. The lights will go on in sequence. There they go. We are moments away from round 12 of the TCR International Series. The lights go off. A great start from Moller. Not so good from the two West Coast Racing Volkswagens. Let's see as they drag down to turn one. Moller indeed gets the jump. And that is Tashi. Already up into third position, bumping against one of the Volkswagens. Tashi having made another brilliant start. I'd like to look back at that. Oh no, that's one of the Alphas. That I think was Kajaya. Caught up in that, and that's one of the West Coast cars as well. Caught up, as is one of the Look Oil Craft Bamboo cars. Just coming around turn one for the first time. So away Moller goes. Surprisingly enough, safety car has been deployed. Kajaya, indeed it is, out of the car. And that's Dan Lloyd we can see in the distance in the number 17 Luke Oil Craft Bamboo car. Now let's look at this. There is Morbidelli. So who hit whom? An astonishing start from Tashi already up to third, and so in the podium positions. Now let's see if we can hang on this time. Ah, and it's one of the Leopard cars that bumped into Kajaya, who in turn sent him into Dan Lloyd, who collected Morbidelli on the way through. Moller controls the restart. He comes into turn 14. No overtaking, remember, until they're across the start-finish line. Hammer down from Moller. Altoe goes with him, as does Tashi, as does Colciago. Racing again here at the Hungaro ring. Mikulic closing the gap on Paulsen. Oh, slightly sideways from Paulsen if he gets turn 14 wrong. Watch for Mikulic in the back of your shot. Will he just slot outside? Little puff of smoke, there goes Mikulic up the inside of Paulsen. So he takes the position, Mikulic then up into sixth. Two cars under investigation. Altoe under attack from Tashi, who squeezes up the inside. Is this second place changing hands? Indeed, no! Altoe has the line. Moller still leads. Altoe hangs on to second. He's trying to shake off Tashi. The crowd love it. Altoe moves to defend. Tashi goes round the outside into turn one. Altoe defends brilliantly from Tashi. The 16-year-old fighting off the 18-year-old. As Oriola makes a move on Colciago. And through goes Tashi into second place. This is the scrap for third. Can Altoe hold on to give West Coast Racing their first podium finish of the year? Oriola just pops out and has a look up the inside. There he goes. Up alongside the Volkswagen. The drag down to turn two, the left-hander. And indeed, Altoe defends. He has the line. Brilliant defending from the young Italian driver. Back of the Audi, sliding through that corner. Huff moves out, but Comini has the line. Oh! Tyre coming off 
Or was that debris from the track? Or was that damage to the back of Kamini's car? Let's just take a look at that. No, track debris. And in comes Borkovic at the end of a, a torrid weekend for the GE Force team and the Alphas. Frustration in the first race, came in with a problem, we think with the exhaust, and then went back out towards the end of the race. But really saying that it was not really going to work here. Probably the same for them in Oschersleben, quite a tight, twisty track. This is turn 13. Hormola gets up the inside, there's contact between the Opel and the Volkswagen. Huff though, very used to the rough and tumble of touring car racing, holds his nerve, holds the line. The right-hander onto the start-finish straight. Rob Huff holds onto 12th position, but that takes the heat off Stefano Camini. Here's the incident again. Hommela lunges up the inside, not enough room for him. Huff closes the door. They touch but Huff holds the position. This is the next scrap we're looking at, this three-way fight between Kamini, Huff and Homola. The fight for 11th place, so not for points, but for glory between Audi, Volkswagen and Opel. And remembering Kamini's comments, oh, centimeters between the pair. Kamini saying that the car was undrivable. Yet he seems to be doing a pretty good job of holding off a former world champion in a Volkswagen. And Vinay and Mikulic. Side by side they go. Vinay, I think, has got the position. But Mikulic has got the line. Around to turn 13 they go. The lead has just changed hands. It's Attila Tashi who storms past Muller. Listen to the cheers as he comes up the start-finish straight. Brilliant, brilliant. Altoe once again defends third place. I think though that Pepe Oriola's got him, he's up the inside. Oriola snatches third place, forces Altoe to run wide. And so in the space of a few hundred meters, the lead changes hands, third place changes hands. Altoe though coming back at Oriola. Through turn two. Oh, and Vervish. Disappointment in race one, disappointment in race two. Yellow flags, that's at turn eight. The left-hander, so Vervish parked up on the outside. So the wheel back in the wheel arch. I was looking for a puncture, but the cause is more spectacular and more obvious. Pepe Oriola. And through he goes, he takes second place from Muller. Around turn 13, the climb up to 14. Oriola takes second place. Moller drops to third. Altoe is fourth. Fifth is Colciago. Sixth is Mikulic. And this is the move. Pepe Oriola delighting the Luke Oil Craft Bamboo team by powering past Jens Rello Moller. Attila Tashi takes his second win of the day. Pepe Oriola second, Mola finishes third ahead of Altoe. Colciago fifth, Mikulic sixth, John Calvinet seventh, Stian Paulsen eighth. Congratulations for the lads from Luke Oil Craft Bamboo. Second place will do nicely, thank you very much, they say. Let's confirm the race result then. Attila Tashi winning from Pepe Oriola. Jens Reno Mola finishing on the podium for the first time. Then it's Altoe, Colciago, Mikulic, Vernet, Paulsen, Nash, and Kamini in the remainder of the top 10 positions. I mean, it's amazing. I never thought anything like this would happen to me, but we are here and I'm unbelievable. And you know, you are the new championship leader. Now I know it. It's a great <laughs> feeling, but we know that from weekend from weekend, it's changing. So it's a, it's a motivation again for me. Wow, two victories. Catapult Atilatashi 
to the top of the driver's standings ahead of his teammate Roberto Colciago. jean carl Vanet is third, Stefano Camini fourth, ahead of Oriola, who will be thankful for that second place, ahead of Borkovic, Nash, Kajaya, Vavish, still Hugo Valente, but Matto Homola has that top 10 in his sights. The weekend has belonged to Mira Racing, and that champagne will taste extremely sweet. They can now splash it around with a bit more abandon than they did after race one. Two fascinating races here at the Hungaro Ring then. A couple of weeks of a break, and then the European leg of the TCR International Series rounds off in Oschersleben in Germany. We'll see you then, but for now, goodbye. <laughs>